There is one immutable fact in the world of cinema. Undeniable, absolute, immortal, sacrosanct. Something that exceeds mere ideas, technologies, and individual people. Something greater than even the sum of all its parts. And that thing is... You've always got to make a quick buck with a shameless sequel. That's what calls us here today. Our last film, Dexter Storm, was the surprise hit of 1959. But if we're going to release a sequel, we'll need to pick that upgrade. Sure, we can spend some extra money and influence points to speed up the process, but it's still going to take some time. Time enough to get everything nice and ready. In the original film, the dashing cowboy, Dexter Storm, rescues a helpless maiden from the clutches of Slumpy Chuck and his gang. Of course, shooting a dozen villains in the process, but that's not enough. This time, we need truly breathtaking battles with hundreds of extras, horses, stunts, we're talking huge sets. We'll need to build a soundstage of absolutely indecent proportions. And to make the costumes and props just as defiantly pompous, we'll need a props and decorations department. We'll hire the most reliable contractors. We don't want any surprises on this one. We need to work on the story, too. Naturally, we've got to show our viewers the same thing they saw the last time, but we also need to make them believe they're watching something new. Slumpy Chuck escapes from prison and kidnaps the unfortunate Gracie again, who by now is legally married to Dexter Storm and bearing their first child. Oh, and that evil bastard Chuck, he... Well, there's something missing. Needs a little pepper. Let's get someone from the script department to come up with a fresh move. Ah, there we go. Torture in captivity. Just what we need to shake up our complacent theater audience, yeah? Of course, Chuck got a little carried away when an enraged Dexter Storm storms the bandit camp alone. Gracie is already dead, and Slumpy Chuck has escaped. Dexter chases him through the desert for five days and five nights, and finally puts a bullet in his forehead. But revenge won't quiet our hero's burning soul. In the end, Dexter Storm goes in search of new adventures. You know, in case we want to milk this rubbish for another sequel. Unfortunately, we won't be getting great marks on continuity. After the first film, our golden boy, Andy Goldbeck, started starring in the cheap westerns our competitors churn out. Then one day, he went on the set so boozed up he was practically sleepwalking, fell off a horse, and broke his neck. Like I always say, you can mix alcohol and heroin during production, but never for more than 50 shooting days in a row. Audiences don't like it too much when you replace an actor. We need to get a legend. There's only one guy for the part, and that's Chris Pankin. But for some reason, the idiot decided he'd retire at the peak of his career. You'll have to use an unconventional approach to get him on board. You know they found him in a cabin in the forest before they brought him here to Hollywood? Well, let's give him a little trip down memory lane. Sometimes you can't beat a little torture in captivity. Life imitates art, they say. Anyway, Penkin's happy to sign the contract, and the ribs will mend in five to six weeks, just when we're wrapping pre-production. Not everybody is thrilled working with Penkin. He can be a little wild and hot-tempered. Our director has already had two heart attacks. He doesn't think he'll survive a third. We've put him in a beautiful villa, made him more willing to take the risk. We used the same actors for the other roles. We're filming nearly everything inside our giant soundstage. What could go wrong? Pankin, that arrogant baboon, went to a restaurant for the first time in years and got so angry when the waiter spilled some wine that he made the boy lick it off the floor. The press will be hammering that drum when it's time for the film's release. The situation on the set isn't any better. Pankin has been all over the director from day one, whining about the script. That Neanderthal can hardly read, but he can say he's never seen such wooden dialogue in his life. We did our best, but the director's heart couldn't take the abuse. We had to find a replacement, Bronto. Filming keeps dragging on, but they're spending money at breakneck speed. Penkin is on everyone's last nerve. He's always late on set, takes any criticism like an insult, and throws tantrums out of the blue. A couple of weeks of this, and the new director is already careening for the madhouse. He made quite an extravagant gesture, shot a horse dead right in front of Penkin, just to show him who was in charge. Penkin says he can't stop thinking about it. He can't concentrate on his part, so filming is moving even more slowly. 
to get the film out this year, we're moving to 14-hour days and seven-day weeks, scrapping some scenes and shooting almost everything in one take. Doesn't matter how bad it is. The crew has been on edge for a long time, so to help smooth things over, we're increasing the level of landscaping. Hmm? That'll make the studio more beautiful and more comfortable. The return of Dexter Storm has barely wrapped, and the results are already depressing. The film's artistic appeal is in the toilet. It doesn't take a focus group to tell you when you've made an exemplary piece of shit. But has any of that ever stopped one shameless sequel from cashing in at the box office? Not even one. We picked Thanksgiving weekend for the premiere, just like most of our competitors. But we have friends who can help us clear the calendar, yeah? We'll have the police spend the next few weeks raiding every other studio in town. That'll make it hard to finish their movies on time. And it wouldn't hurt to buy up all the prime advertising space in the country for the next few weeks, but even that won't be enough. There's one organization that can promote our film through its own channels. They seem like good boys and they have a nice leader. A bad person wouldn't go around calling himself an imperial wizard, would he? No. Aside from that, we just need a handful of cash to cover up that scandal with Pinkin at the restaurant, and we are ready for release. The critics see right through it, but the audience loves it. After all, we told them it's exactly what they want. The first month at the box office, the studio raked in a record $29 million. The film will keep printing money for at least a couple of more months. But that's not the end of it. Mm -mm. Because in the world of cinema, there's one immutable fact. Undeniable, absolute, immortal, sacrosanct. Something that exceeds mere ideas, technologies, and individual people. Something greater than the sum of all its parts. And that thing is... You can always make extra money on the merchandise.